There you go, good sir. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Professional. <laughs> I asked Dan. So hold on, let me put my ears in. I asked Dan, hey, do you want to shoot it? After the last scene, he's trying to be all professional here on camera. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, I would. Yes. Mm -hmm. Good day, sir. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right. All right. Take your time. Just put one around in that top area of the target. Okay. Now just take your time and shoot for that same hole. <laughs> You're trying to make a circle. You're trying to make a circle like I did. <laughs> Everyone, welcome back to the NFA Review Channel. Today we have a really unique firearm to review, the Walther Q5 Match SF Black Tie. Yes, the name is very long, but this is a very unique firearm and it definitely deserves our attention today. So like usual, we're going to get into detail here in the studio and then we're going to hit the range and see just how it performs. So this is from the new Walther Meister Manufacturer line or Master Manufacturer line. So this is one of four of a new premium series pistol that they recently released. So this is the black tie. So definitely something fitting that James Bond would definitely uh, want to carry in his duties. Now, these are all hand fit and finished in Germany and then imported here to the United States. So very, very cool gun. I've been actually on a kick lately of buying these, these heavy, you know, range toy only firearms. I, my wife recently bought me the Beretta uh, Centennial, which is really cool. And then I recently bought a HK uh, USP Expert 9. So large frame, nine millimeters. This one, of course, being all steel. I'm really, really excited to get it out there. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at what you get inside the box. All right, let's get this puppy out of here. Beautiful, beautiful case, very high quality. Uh, before we get to that, you have your usual stuff, warranty card, manual, is this a DVD? <laughs> a DVD on the PPQ Armorer's Bench. All right. And then we also have the pistol accuracy target. So this is the actual target that they use to qualify this gun with. My serial number is S02143. So it looks pretty accurate there. It doesn't say a distance. So go ahead and move this aside. So looking at the case right away, You'll see it does have a combo roller. You have three digits there. I can think of no other combo but 007 on this one, but I digress. When you open it up, you have your beautiful uh, felt lining here, and then you got your gun, a lock, some small tools for the sights, and a spare magazine, and a loader. So now that we got that out of the way, let's go ahead and get to business. So right off the bat, the specifications for the Q5 Match SF black tie is gonna come in at an overall length of 8.7 inches, a width of 1.3 inches, and a weight of two pounds, 15 ounces. So yes, that is a very substantial gun, but this is of course machine from steel, the frame, the slide, the barrel, owl, everything on the gun. So, uh, I mean, you're gonna have that weight there and that's exactly the point of this entire gun is for uh, range fun, for accuracy, for fast follow-up shots. Speaking of the barrel, comes in at five inches. Your capacity, of course, is gonna be 15 plus one. And going back to the materials, of course, you have, the, uh, you have a steel base plate on the magazine. You have a steel frame with an uh, aluminum uh, grip here, more on that later. And then of course, a steel slide and barrel. Now, as far as the finish here, you'll, you'll notice that it has a stainless look. So they actually take the steel after they machine it, they treat it with tenifer, and then after the tenifer, they coat it with a coating called Stenox, hopefully I'm pronouncing that right, but it basically gives it this really, you know, Robar NP3 type coating on it. It's very slick. Um, you could probably run this dry on accident and it's not gonna 
do anything to the firearm. It's very, very slick, metal on metal feel, very precise. Okay, for this review, let's just kind of systematically go through the gun and we can explain everything that I'm seeing and feeling here in the studio. And then of course, we'll get out there and get shooting. So of course, magazine, you have orange follower, comes with two, uh, 15 plus one, we discussed that. Very, very substantial feeling with that uh, steel weighted uh, base plate on there. Moving up, you have a nice magwell, very, very wide. You have your uh, Walter engraving on the bottom and machined angles here to help guide it in there. Now going back to the grip, like I mentioned earlier, this is one piece, okay, it's not two. This is one piece of solid 7075 aluminum that they machine down and then they put the checkering on it on the sides and in the rear. So very, very trick there. Of course, speaking of checkering, you have 20 lines per inch on the front strap of the uh, frame here. Feels really good. You got a high cut here, so you can get a nice high purchase on the gun. Moving up, you have a large competition size magazine release, very easy to hit. That is reversible for you southpaws out there. Speaking of which, you also have your slide release on both sides. Moving along, we have a large beaver tail on the back. It really, really fits nice in your hand. Now you're probably wondering, why you have such a large beaver tail on a non-hammer gun. This is a striker fired gun. Uh, and they did it for a couple reasons. One, you're gonna have a really easy purchase when you go reach down for your holster during a competition, okay? It's also going to allow uh, more balance and stability onto recoil. And of course, their third reason is because it looks badass and they're, they're definitely uh, correct there. So moving up, we have target sites. They are serrated, all right? And they are black, and then the top we have, it's a flat top with serrations on there to help with reflection, reflection of the sun while shooting again. And then of course, probably the most important part of this firearm is the trigger. So from my research that I've done before we did this review, this trigger, while it is available to buy and put in your other PPQ models, it's not going to operate like this. They have different triggers. And the reason is they changed all the geometry back here on the inside. And it is nothing like the other PPQs out there. It is specific to these new four uh, series guns that, just, that they just put out. So uh, from everything I've read, it comes in at five pounds. And because of the change in the geometry, it really feels like a 1911 trigger. And I know everybody's, oh, it's 1911, 1911 this, 1911 that. It really does. It breaks super clean. This puts the, the trigger on my Beretta Centennial to shame in spades. I still can't figure out why Beretta's putting out a $3,000 handgun like that, and the trigger on it is worse than a basic 92FS out of the box. It, it's really that bad. It's like 10 pounds. It breaks horrible. It's just they need to fix it. So this was a, was a welcome change there. So you have your uh, safety built into the face of the trigger, very Glock-like. Uh, you can actually feel it go in. And of course, I'll throw some close-ups here, but it just has zero take up. Look at that clean break. No over-travel, barely. Okay, I'll reset it here. Check out this reset. <laughs> This is gonna be a very fast shooter. Now there's not really a lot of reviews out right now on this gun, cause it is very expensive. We'll get to that at the end of the studio portion though. Um, but just from handling it here over the past week and a half, two weeks since I've owned it, um, it's, pro it's, it's approaching the value for what they're asking for this because just manipulating it, taking it apart, looking at the close machining, on the inside and the outside and lack of machining marks. It's just, they put a lot of time hand fitting this gun. This is something very, very special. I don't know if this is a limited gun as far as numbers, um, but you can't really find these things. Uh, gun broker, I just checked before walking in here to film and there was one for sale. Uh, when I found mine, I, I, I actually paid slightly over MSRP because we could not even get it through our dealership. So. Uh, moving on, on the slide, you have beautiful machining here. Uh, I was told they did this for balance, not just looks. Part of the metal that's removed has to do with keeping it balanced in your hand, so it's not too heavy this way, and it's not too heavy this way. It's not too light at any one spot. 
you know, it just balances very nice. I mean, as soon as you grab this gun, it's again, very 1911 like the grip angle, you just grab it and, sh and point and your sights are perfectly planed out. It is just, you really got to feel this in your hand. It's just the ergonomics here at play are just phenomenal. All right, as far as field stripping, much like its other counterparts, you're gonna unlock your slide at the rear after, of course, re removing the magazine, ensuring that the gun is empty because it does require you to pull the trigger. Slide to the rear, take down flag to the vertical position, release, take down lever, pull trigger, slide comes off. So very, very easy. Um, kind of like a Glock, add in the uh, take down flag part. Um, nice coating on the barrel. I should wear pretty good. Um, no real visible machining marks even on the inside. They, they went to great lengths to, to hand finish this gun. And then of course it has that coating on top of it. Of course, reassembly is going to be like any other pistol. Reverse that process. Throw your recoil spring back in. Lube up your rails here. Lock to the rear. Take down flag down. Function check. Perfect. So very, very easy to maintain, beautiful gun, and probably shoots extremely well. And it should with a MSRP of $2699. So around $2,700. Uh, I paid another hundred on top of that just to get this in my hands. So uh, just under $3,000 for this gun. But I guess we will find out if it is worth every penny. Let's go ahead and hit the range. Everyone, we just made it out to the range. I actually brought my buddy Dan out here today. He's going to help run some rounds through the new gun. So uh, as you can see here too, we, we brought a couple million dollars worth of uh, 9mm out here to help us today. So we're going to shoot some Federal 115 and 124 grain. And let me go show you the target situation. All right. Beautiful morning today in Florida. High is 76. I know. You're jealous. That's cool. So we're going to be shooting from 21 feet today. We have my steel here, so we're gonna run some function uh, checks. I forgot paint. So we're just gonna basically aim here for the center and we're gonna shoot some function tests with the 115 and 124. And then when we're comfortable with the new gun with the trigger, I brought some fresh cardboard here, as you guys suggested. And I'm gonna try to shoot some groupings here and see what we can do. So uh, let's go ahead without further ado, load up some mags and get to it. All right guys, first rounds fired out of the new black tie. We're gonna start with the 115 grain. See how nice this thing is. Wow. It's so flat. I'm not dropping this mag in the sand. <laughs> Little uh, half ass tactical reload here. Wow, so that was 115 followed by 124 grain and I was hitting all in that uh, red square on the steel. And uh, wow, the trigger on this thing uh, definitely met my expectations from what we went over in the studio. Let's go ahead and shoot some groups. All right guys, before we get started on the groupings, we wanted to run some slow motion drills so we can see just how flat this is staying. So I got some 115 grain ammo in here. And then we're going to switch and I'm going to let Dan try it for the very first time with 124 grain. So let's go ahead and get focused here. Let me know when you're ready. I'll do the countdown. Ready. Three, two, one. It's actually extremely easy to get 15 rounds off. Ready. Three, two, one. All right, guys, so Dan's much taller than I, and I don't feel like resetting the height and focus on the camera, so your head's a little lopped off there, pal. Uh, so Dan's first round's fired out of the new Q5 Match SF black tie, and we are shooting 115 grain ammo, so let's get your opinion on this thing. Ha, ha, ha. 
<laughs> I would say of 13 out of 14, you put like that. Smooth. And you've never shot that thing. All right, other than the uh, Zephyr Hill skydive team behind us making some noise, it's pretty nice and peaceful out here. So let's go ahead and disturb that. Uh, we are going to be doing the uh, scenes on the cardboard now. So Dan's behind me with an over the shoulder view. We got fresh cardboard. I'm just gonna shoot from the middle and then try to you know, close, close that gap. Uh, typically, we would shoot a five round grouping, but uh, we forgot and loaded a whole mag. So let's see what this looks like. I have not shot for groups in a long time. You ready back there, Dano? That last one was a flyer. Um, walk up there real quick and show them. I'm gonna put the gun at my side. Let's try to show them so they could see that. So this was shots one, two, three, four, and then I had a flyer because I was impatient. But let's go ahead and shoot the other 10 rounds to see what that looks like. Damn it. Okay, that's a rapid fire group. <laughs> oh, definitely not my best work. We need to try that again. We need to load up another mag. I'll shoot somewhere else on the cardboard here, but flyer. Still, I mean, I wasn't really shooting as well as I should have. Let's, um, I'm gonna aim up here. And let's load up another mag and try that again. All right, take two. Now we got the jitters out. Let's, uh, let's see if I can actually shoot a decent group here. I actually take my time. I'm actually going to shoot. I'm going to shoot below the group that I just shot. <laughs> Show them that. Um, I was waiting for you to finish circle. I know. <laughs> Maybe I should shoot one more. That was awesome. So this was one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> All right, let's back up. I, I'm gonna have to hit that. Oh my god! Why did I stop? That was epic. Look at that thing. There's no way. There's no way I'm gonna be able to finish that now. Damn it! I should have just went. I should have just went for it. Damn it. All right, let's uh, go take a closer look at this. So this is me taking my time, 15 rounds. This is me not taking my time, <laughs> 15 rounds. <laughs> That's impressive, I mean, it really is. I, I mean, I don't shoot for accuracy a lot. I do function testing, suppressor testing. Uh, to be able to just come out here and do that with this gun is, uh, definitely makes me look better than I usually shoot. So, Dan, you wanna give it a whirl? Absolutely. <laughs> yes, sir, good day, sir. <laughs> Absolutely. All right, what are you going to try here? All right. Put the mag in it. There you go, good sir. Mr. <laughs> Mr. Professional. <laughs> I asked Dan. So hold on, let me put my ears in. I asked Dan, hey, do you want to shoot it? After the last scene, he's trying to be all professional here on camera. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely, I would. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good day, sir. <laughs> oh. All right. All right. Take your time. Just put one around in that top area of the target. Okay. Now just take your time and shoot for that same hole. Take your time. <laughs> You're trying to make a circle. You're trying to make a circle like I did. Absolutely. <laughs>
good luck to you. I was like, where did my sight go? Oh, crap. <laughs> Let me get a focus here. That ain't good. Oh, <laughs> where did my sight go? Let's, <laughs> let's, uh, let's empty that. All right. Let's take a closer look. Yeah, what the hell? Oh, the screw on the inside came loose. Let's uh, go back to the truck and field strip it, see if I have something we can tighten it with. All right, so we just tightened the screw on the front sight. We topped off his mag, so he's gonna continue that top group. Go ahead. Nice. Nice shooting, sir. Good day. Good day, sir. What do you got here? Not bad, right? I mean, really? Yeah. 21 absolutely. feet? You have? <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> All right, since we mentioned the other two guns in the studio, the Beretta Centennial and the HK9 Expert, uh, we're going to shoot them back to back here. So we have uh, three mags loaded, ready to go, 10 rounds in each of 115 grain Federal. And we're going to try to shoot some groupings here. I got Dan over my shoulder. Let's see what I can do. Uh, I'll do, let's just find a clean space here to shoot. Bottom left group. This one loaded all the way up. Yeah, that one was loaded all the way up, but let's just shoot 10 out of it. Uh, so if you want to walk up there and show them that group, I'll make this weapon safe here. Clear. So it was that bottom left group. All right, now I'm going to shoot the bottom right with the Centennial. Three dot targets instead of the serrated all black. Wow, pulled it. This trigger is really heavy. Heavy trigger, but uh, I bet if I took my time with that, be a little tighter. So here's the uh, black tie, 10 rounds, and here's the Beretta. Now I started out like this. I kind of drifted. So if I would have taken my time, I think it, it would have been tighter even though the trigger is a lot heavier. That was unexpected. Now we're gonna try the HK Expert 9, USB Expert 9. Uh, where can I shoot here? Look, I'll try the middle right area of cardboard. Wow, much lighter gun. Feels like a toy compared to the other two steel frames. Black serrated target, no dots. Light trigger. Had a hard time seeing the sun come through the hole there. little vertical string there. Uh, got it in focus. One, two, three shots, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So a little vertical string there. Though, the, I, was that my first three? I, I don't remember. Well, it, was going up. it was here. So, you know, <laughs> they're, they're all the same size group, really. Okay, I hope you guys enjoyed the review thus far. Uh, we got it here, had a pretty eventful range day, as you can see, uh, under rapid fire with the 115 and 124 grain ammo. Even those slow motion clips, it had a really nice flat plane to it. Uh, you were able to get the sight on target very quickly. Um, trigger was exceptional. 
Uh, out of the three guns that I mentioned in the studio, it definitely has the best. I would give HK second place and the Beretta third. That being said, uh, when we did this last bit here of all the groupings, they're all different shapes, but they are, they pretty much measure exactly the same. I felt though, if I took longer with the HK, I probably could have tightened it up a little bit more, which can probably be said for all of them. Uh, but as far as the, tr the trigger, the overall crisp crispness of it, uh, this one is definitely more enjoyable to shoot. And it's also more predictable, if that makes any sense. So the Beretta was so heavy, it was almost hard to tell when it was gonna break. Uh, the HK was so light, it would surprise you, but the Walther had a very predictable, repetitive trigger action to it. Uh, we did have one issue with the sight today, as you guys saw, when Dan was shooting his groups. Um, the flathead screw inside, they must not have put Loctite on it. It came loose, rotated. Uh, luckily, Stephen came to the rescue, brought a small screwdriver. We were able to fit it through the, uh, through the slide cuts that they put in there for the uh, sight we're able to tighten it up. So when I get home, I, I definitely will remove it, put some Loctite on it when I clean it. So other than that, zero malfunctions today. So that's a plus. We shot, what do you think, Dan? Like uh, 250 rounds total on and off camera? Something like that? Maybe <laughs> Maybe 300 rounds, something like that. So no, it was a really fun time today. It was really cool to shoot this gun back to back with the other uh, two that I, that I currently have that as far as these full size, uh, nine millimeters. Uh, one other thing, Walter, I don't know if you guys can hear that next to my microphone, but the, uh, the uh, jet funnel on here, the Magwell funnel is a little loose, so it rattles. So I don't know if that's just a, a pin issue here. There's a clearance issue, but between that and the sight, um, I don't know if I just got a, you know, bad one out of the box or if it just needs a little bit more QC, but definitely needs some Loctite on the sight. And I don't know if that's normal for the bottom of this to rattle. I mean, it's secure, it doesn't move anywhere. You can pull on it, it's not going anywhere. It's just, uh, you definitely don't wanna to listen to that. So other than that, really good gun, stamp of approval here. I uh, just need to work out a couple bugs out here on the range. And this is something you can definitely shoot for an extended period of time on the range and have a lot of fun. And of course, it'll make you look good at the same time. So hope you guys enjoyed this review. Of course, if you are a Patreon member, you guys have supplied all the ammo for today's review. The ammo is expensive and all the money I get from Patreon, I've been pumping into buying ammo these days. So thanks again for that, guys. Click that like button if you like what you saw here. Subscribe if you're new to the channel, and I'll see you next time.